Quarantine, you know the vibes. Zoom. What's good, Josh? Your boy DDG, and right now you're watching Quarantine Questions with Rap TV. Yeah. You can quarantine the body, but you can't quarantine my soul. What's good, y'all? Pro to Goat here letting you know that I'm running a special on rapart.com. 25% off any one of these rap art pieces, and there's plenty more on the website. If you use my name, Pro, P-R-O, at the very end of your checkout, you get 25% off. These are just a few. Look, Coming at Age of Hip Hop Story 1. We got Coming at Age of Hip Hop Story 2. We got the many faces of Snoop Dogg. We got Jigga Man. We got the many faces of Post Malone. We got NBA Youngboy. We got Kodak Black. We got Juice World. We got ASAP Rocky. We got everything on there, man. So make sure you go to rapart.com. Use my name, P-R-O. Oh, as your promo code to get 25% off and get you some rap art. And now back to the interview. Yo, what's good, y'all? We got DDG in the building, virtually, of course. You may know him from hits like Givenchy, which has over 26 million views on YouTube. Moonwalk in the Calabasas, the remix with Blueface, has over 10 million views on YouTube. And even his little Yachty does from way back, Big Boat, has over 13 million views on YouTube. But yeah, man, I'd like to officially welcome you to Quarantine Questions of Rap TV. I'm your host, Pro the Goat. What's good, bro? How's it going, man? What's good? What's the deal, man? Coolin' man, coolin'. By the way, I just saw you enter that the Crew League 100K basketball competition. When's that start? I think it's middle of October, like October 16th or something like that. But um, yeah, I plan on winning. Okay, bet. And what's your what's your um? I know you guys probably putting together a little strategy. What's what's the strategy on that? Just pass me the ball. You know, that's, <laughs> that's usually the strategy that I tell my teammates. That's the easiest, most simplest way to win. I bet that, bet that. And then they said there were going to be some performances there too, right? You performing? No, nah, I don't think I'm performing. I like talking about that. But I think it's some other special performances, like secretive or something. Okay, dope, dope. And shit, man, speaking of performing the music, uh, congratulations on the Moonwalking Remix video. Y'all dropped that like a month ago. It's at over 10 million views right now, right? It's crazy. It's going crazy. It's going great. Exactly like I thought it would, so... Everything is going according to plan. Yeah, man. How was the video shoot? Looks like you guys were getting extra litty there. Yeah, it was fun. It was lit. It was all genuine, organic vibes. We just, it was last second, too, because two Airbnbs got canceled right before that. So we oh, was trying man. to figure out, you know, where we would go. And then we, uh, me and my team caught a little spot last second. Blueface posted on the story. We trying to pull up. Boop, boop, bam. Yeah, that's the product. Bet, man. It seemed to work out. Mm -hmm. And by the way, too, by the way, too, man, like, I'm not going to lie. I was I was actually really impressed by Blueface's last verse on there, bro. Like, the whole DDG rhyme scheme, and he ended it with the Roadrunner. All you heard was me, me, me. Like, what was your reaction when you first heard his verse, man? It was hard. I was in the studio. He was, just, he was uh, like, oh, this is hard. He was hype. He was hype. It was fun. He I got a little bit of footage from the studio that I never put out, but it's, it's, we all was vibing in there. You still trying to put it out? Or? I might. Think about it. I should. It's kind of old now, but you're right. Wait, so he wrote the verse in the studio with you and then laid it down? Yeah. He was right oh, there. Okay. Yeah, it was right on the spot. He told him to put it to the studio. And then he, we, went, we figured out the placements of where he should come in at. And then after that, he went in there. Filled the spaces up, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, he killed that joint, man. That was probably one of like, that's probably the hardest Blueface verse I ever heard. I'm not gonna lie. That's to what a, that's what a lot of people saying. Blueface been hard to me though, but yeah. that's what a lot of people saying. That shit was that shit was hard. Facts, man. Facts. And then and then by the way too, uh, Funk Flex just posted that you sent him a record for his project. Is it safe to say that the OGs are taking you serious? Oh, uh, yeah, man. They're showing all types of love, man. I, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Fun Flex, my dog. He just be calling me, man. It's my dog. Yeah. Yeah, and I know you went on Tim Westwood TV and did a little freestyle over there. Are we going to see you on Fun Flex anytime soon, sp spitting a freestyle? Oh, yeah. Now nah, it's mandatory now. Got to. You got to. You got to. <laughs> Y'all talked about it yet or not? No, we ain't talked about it yet, but I'm with it for sure. No doubt, man. No doubt. And then since it is quarantine questions, you know, I got to ask you. I mean, have you even been quarantining at all? Like, how was the summer like? I 
I ain't gonna cap. I haven't, but I have it the same. I haven't. I haven't. I've been quarantining. I haven't been in quarantine by choice. Okay. I just be. I just be bored. Like if I can leave the country right now, I would. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's not like I'm nowhere near scared of the, the virus, but you know, keep your hands in the time. Thanks, man. Well, shit. Let's let's take it back for your fans one time. Pontiac, Michigan. Um, just give us a little snapshot of what it was like growing up around that area, man. Like people that don't know. Uh, it's really it's a really rough area, man. I grew up rough. Like I grew up having to to uh, put water on the stove so I can take a bath type of shit. You know what Damn. I mean? Like we, yeah, we, we used to warm it up. Yeah, but it was you know it was still a, we still had a family, so you know it wasn't nothing that I really thought of mm-hmm. being younger, but like. Thinking back on it, like damn, yeah, we was really fucked up. Did you have a big family or not really? Yeah, sort of, kind of, yeah, something like that. Okay, you you think that put a little like you know a little thing in your spirit to like have to go out and really get it because kind of where you were coming from? Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. That's why my Instagram name and my YouTube name is Pontiac May DDG. Mm-hmm. It's just because where I'm from made me want to go harder you know what no, I mean? no doubt man and then in school too shit man you did actually pretty well and you even graduated as valedictorian in your class right yeah man i was a little nerd man i had all the holes though <laughs> <laughs> i was a little nerd <laughs> no doubt and obviously you've been in the music ever since you were really young uh at what point did you decide to take the youtube shit serious that was like uh high school into high school graduating going into college that summer okay yeah, that's when i really started like just doing youtube here and there but i wasn't really doing it doing it before youtube i was honestly i was trying to be vine famous like i was really yeah. into vine like that was my thing and then i had got banned on there so i was like okay let me try youtube for what i got i put like a naked girl on there on some oh. like i was just having too much fun so then i ended up uh like, let me try youtube out so I was doing little skits on there, and then how to get a girl naked in five seconds? Like, <laughs> so, it, nah, it was it was weirder than that. I don't even want to tell you, bro. It was weirder. <laughs> I don't know why I posted it, but um, nah, it's, it was uh, yeah, I tried YouTube out, and then I I started taking it serious around like freshman year of college. Facts, man, and, and, and shit, bro. Like, you're an inspiration to a lot of kids that want to start a YouTube channel. You know what I mean? Like, and it's obvious that. You know, not everything is perfectly monetized pieces of content when you post stuff up. So just talking to the kids out there, what would you say was your biggest L that you took on YouTube? Mm. I would say making my relationships so important. Mm-hmm. Just all my relationships end off of Internet shit just because mm-hmm. I put them on the Internet. You know what I mean? But it's kind of like it's kind of hard not to at this point. You know what yeah. I mean? It, I can't go nowhere at this point. Like, if I go out with a girl right now, then it's a possibility that I might be seen by somebody who might take a picture and then both blog your posts and all the other shit. So it's like, I don't know. It's kind of, it's hard for me to do it. That's why I feel like, you know, I'm going to just be single for a little bit. But it was good and bad though, right? Because like, you know, the views came from the breakups. The views came from the relationship stuff too, right? Yeah, no, that's facts. I went gold off of a breakup. So it's like, Breakups is they 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 work in your favor monetarily, but like you know feelings wise. Oh yeah, emotionally it's got a taxi. Emotionally, the internet be killing my relationships. That's the only thing I really that's the biggest errors I be taking. Damn. So how do you think everybody else does it? Like celebrities and and like you know rappers and stuff. Yo, I think everybody be getting divorced, divorced, Facts. broken Facts. up. Really Facts. Tough. Facts. No, Hard right. you, got, right. you got millions of people in your business of who you messing with. You know. You're right, man. And and shit, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the first video I think that you went viral off of, was it the It G Ma reaction video? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you couldn't even monetize that, right? Because it was a reaction video. Yeah, I got copyrighted. But that boy hit like 2 million in like a few days. I'm like, what the hell? I went from 500 subscribers to like 15,000 in like a day. And then okay. Was, oh, okay. Shit, real. That's cr- so you got that many off of just that video. Yeah, just reacting to it. Was that was that the biggest like batch of subscribers, or was it from the Lil Yachty diss song? Oh, I mean, around the Lil Yachty uh, diss track, um, 
I don't remember. I was on a wave during that time. That was like 2017. I was I was dissing everybody, you know. <laughs> but it was all fun and games, though. I yeah, yeah, yeah. The DMs and all that. But it was like during that time, I was gaining so much, so many subscribers and and followers and views. I couldn't even tell you, to be honest with you. But I'm, I'm that was 2017 is was my golden year on YouTube for sure. 100%. That was the biggest year on YouTube, yeah. Okay, and then um, I'm actually surprised you guys haven't done a song together, you and Yachty, since then. Yeah, that'd be lit. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, and then and then a question that I just had, just because you know YouTube and shit. Uh, what what was the point of having? What you had like eight different channels at one point? Like, why did you start so many channels? I was just, I was finessing basically because okay. YouTube was like messing up people's channels and stuff. So I'll make another channel, and then it'll blow up. And then I'll make another channel. Then it'll blow up. That way, like, if YouTube mess up one channel, I can always go to another one. So you can keep uploading no matter what, right? Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. That's what's up, man. And then at what point did you go from, all right, you were doing the YouTube shit. You popped off on there. You went viral. You you know, you're making money. Um, At what point were you like, all right, fuck this shit. Let me just do the music shit. Um, so it was really, it was around 20... 17 end of 2017 youtube was like i don't know well it was really off of the di the diss track that i did on Lil yachty and all that other shit and then i started mm -hmm. posting like songs after that and i was just noticing like more views than i would get on the blog or something like that so i was like just put two and two together like maybe i should try music out for real but mm -hmm. around that time youtube was a shaky platform at the same time so i'm all i'm like I'm the type of person where if I see any type of like mishap and what I'm putting all my eggs into, mm -hmm. I hurry up and switch over to something else. You know what I'm saying? That way I, I ain't, I'm not going broke no time soon. So it's like, yeah. I was like, YouTube was a little shaky at the time for everybody. Were they demonetizing a lot of videos? Crazy. They was taking everybody. Cheese, money. Like my money went down like 80%. Like it was Jeez. bad. Bro. I was like, okay. I went panicking and then I was just like, okay, let me, this is a good time to really like try music. Well, what, what, what was, what was the biggest video that got demonetized that you were like, damn, man, I could have made so much money off of this shit. That's a good ass question. That's a good ass question. Cause I got one too. Like it hit a million views and you didn't see a cent from it. Like I can't think, but I got many of them, many of them. Okay. That's gotta be frustrating. But I mean, your following was going up, so. Yeah. No doubt. And then shit, man, following your music career, you already had a lot of steam on YouTube and social media platforms. Like, why did you choose to team up with Epic Records instead of just doing the shit independent? It's just because I want to be a mainstream artist. Okay. You know, I, I don't... The underground stuff is cool. Like, man, I made... that My song, Arguments That Went Gold, I dropped it independently. Okay. I made so much money off of that. It's ridiculous. But at the same time, it's like... I want to be a household name. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm not doing this for the money. I can make money in a bunch of different places easily. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm just doing this for the legacy. Okay. What was, I mean, somebody like Chance though, like it seems like he's, you know, independent. He's still like a household name. Yeah. I mean, is he really independent though? I, I, I think that's what's, you know, the persona or like, you know, publicly, the perception of it but i don't know maybe you're right it's just, maybe certain, things, it's just certain things that make you an independent artist like it's mm -hmm. you don't have like like you hear people like chance on the radio and stuff like that you know that yeah. comes from a different type of bag that comes yeah, from a different type sure. of backing so it's like that's to me that that's not independent independent is when you literally doing everything yourself facts facts and man shit you look you own all of your masters that shit's huge you know what i mean you see you see people like russ talking about the importance of owning your masters and that was a big part of your contract even back then so what made you see the importance in that like at what point were you like all right this shit needs to be like part of the contract no matter what it's because i know i'm gonna blow up that's the thing like i know i'm gonna blow up. i know i'm gonna be a big artist i know my music is gonna generate a lot of income so it's like me owning my masters and and just owning my music is it's like why would I why would I sell that? I don't need a label, you know what I mean? I don't need a label. It's just like I said, I want to become a mainstream A-list artist, you know? 
So owning my masters was just, that's just a no brainer. Okay. And then once you become a household name, do you feel like you're going to go independent? Cause you really don't need a label after that. I don't know. I kind of like being signed is not bad. I like people, people be making it bad, but I kind of, it's, you know, it's kind of cool having a whole building behind you, you know, and having yeah, no work doubt. for you and just, they whole focus is just to make you bigger, you know? No, I feel no, like you no, got to no. break bread with people in this game to get bigger. You can't do it all yourself. Facts, man. And shit, you've collaborated with so many different rappers from Famous Dex, Swabby and Namir, obviously Blueface. Uh, how do you think you were able to break that YouTube rapper stereotype that so many people fall into? Um, I just feel like it really just come with like just good music and just association with, you know, other artists, you know? So it's like okay. before this before this feature that I got from Blueface on the Moonwalking joint, I didn't drop a feature from like a especially like an artist that's not in my camp or somebody that's bigger than me in years, you know? So it's okay. like, I already knew in my head, it's like any, when I, when I do a song with another artist, I'm gonna make sure that I, that it's a hard ass song. And I mm -hmm. feel like when I put out, when, when an artist do music with me, cause I got so many features, bro. I got like stuff in the stash and all this other stuff. Yeah. So I feel like when artists do songs with me, they hear how hard it is and it makes them go harder. So I feel like any right. feature that I got on my song, it's gonna be hard regardless. Facts, facts, and so so you bring the best out of people. It, okay, and and you're saying basically you you're letting the music speak for itself, right? Like it's just hard regardless of who you are. Yeah, so it's, I feel like the just having like features and and stuff like that. I feel like that's gonna make everybody brain get trained into a different type of thought. Like oh, yeah, YouTube rap. They already say it, and just like three weeks ago they were saying I was a YouTube rapper. So it's like. Yeah. It's just a whole mental thing to me, you know. People already knew I was hard. It's just an association type of thing. Facts, man, facts. And then, and what would you say is your favorite collaboration so far, like with all the people I listed? Or with who, some people that I haven't listed that you might have a dope-ass collaboration on the way. I think the most I fun I had was definitely the moonwalking. Music. The blue face joint? It no, just seemed no. like it was, though. It was fun. It was just vibes. Like, we was just chilling. It was no, no issues at all. It was lit. Facts, man. Facts. And so, are you gonna just keep dropping singles, or do we got an album on the way? Like, nah, I got a, I got like? a, um, I got a project on the way with my homie OG Parker. So, okay, you know, producer art of tape, and we got, we got it flooded with features. So, facts, it's gonna be, man. it's gonna be exciting. The way I announce facts. the features and stuff like that, I think it, people are gonna be really excited to hear it, and I think this is gonna be a turning point in my career for sure. Facts. And then and then can you tell us what the next music video is or not really? Um not really. I can't tell you yet. Okay. But I have details soon. Okay, no doubt. And then and then here's a here's a random question that I had. So on social media now you see rappers uploading, you know, videos of them boxing and boxing skills and stuff, but you actually used to box. Yeah. Like, do you think that you could beat any rapper out there on some boxing shit? On some boxing shit, yeah. For sure? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bro, I'm, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. It's different, bro. When you get in the ring, it's different than street fighting. You know what I mean? It's certain yeah. shit you can't do. You got to rely solely on your hands. And you got to rely solely on and your the arms. And the technique, right? Like, like, right? like, yeah, like it's, footwork. It's, it's, it's certain techniques. It's certain, you know, certain breathing techniques. It's like, it's just certain stuff that I know that if, if, if the other artists can't box, I'm going to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you be watching the videos. Unless, videos somebody, like, unless somebody get a little shot, he knock me out. That's the only way. You know what I mean? But okay, that doesn't usually happen. So I'm surprised you haven't put up a video yet. I want somebody to set up like a, you know, like a rapper's boxing thing. Bro. Yeah, that shit would go. That shit would be tight. Like the basketball tournament kind of thing, but like boxing wise. Yeah, I definitely participate. It's just, you know, it gotta make sense though. Yeah, that shit would be lit, man. So shit, is there anything else you wanna tell your fans out there riding with you since day one? Man, I love y'all. Uh keep on tapping in. I might come back to YouTube one of these days. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. I mean it's always gonna be a bag there for you, you know that, so I know that. I man, it ain't even about the money. Like if it was about the money, trust me, I would not have quit. Right. 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 But, you know, I just be looking out for new music, man. And what about touring, bro? Like, I know it probably took a hit with the COVID shit, but what are we looking like next year, you think? 
next year, I mean, if everything's open, it seems like the the uh, the East Coast opening up. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Florida seemed to just open everything up just now. Yeah, the East Coast, the South is opening up. So probably going to do some one-offs here and there and, and try to see. Yeah, you should go on tour with Blueface. I feel like y'all would knock some shit out. Like That'd be lit. That'd be super <laughs> lit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bet. So once again, I'm Pro to Goat with Rap TV, and this has been Quarantine Questions. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button and notification button to stay up to date. We're dropping interviews all the time. Make sure y'all go get that Rap TV merch at rapart.com and join our community by texting 908 341 And as always, don't forget to smash that like button. And one last time, let's give it up for DDG, y'all. Thanks, bro. Let's get it. Appreciate you. You can quarantine the body. She can't quarantine my soul.